Hey, welcome back and thanks for joining me again. I am excited about today's video, although I don't know what it's going to be at the end, but I want to show you a project that I've started. Um, my sister's having her first baby and I wanted to make a crib mobile with the safari theme. And so I started looking on Pinterest to get some ideas and I didn't really come up with a pattern or anything specific that I wanted to follow exactly, but I started getting ideas for something that I could create myself. So I'll show you here some of the pictures that I found on Pinterest. These are um, mobiles that other people have made, but they gave me my inspiration. So. I'm going to take you along and show you some of maybe my somewhat unconventional ways of making patterns and getting ideas and hopefully at the end I will have a cute crib mobile to show you with elephant and I have my lion started. I just have them pinned together right now so I don't lose my pieces and I have a giraffe so far. I'll show you how I created, gotten ideas, and created these patterns. The way I make my patterns is I find an image, a digital image online somewhere, Pinterest, wherever you can find something close to what you want, and I save it to my computer. Then I will either just use it as is and make it larger or smaller, but if there's one small part of the image that I want to trace, I might have to um, make a screenshot and just save that one part of the image. Once I get that, then I can enlarge it. Once I get my image the size that I want it to be, I think this looks like a good size for my tree, um, I will take my paper, tracing paper, packing paper, whatever it is, and place it over the image. And as you can see, the image shines through the paper. So now I can take my pen and begin to trace it. Now, this might be a little difficult at this angle, so you can call me really crazy here, but you just have to be careful with your computer so as not to bump the backside over, but you can place it down so you're drawing at a more natural angle and begin to trace your image onto the paper. And there we go. We have a pattern to make a tree. I guess I should mention that the screen of my computer does have a screen protector on it, so I don't think that tracing on it lightly is going to hurt the screen. It hasn't so far, so just so you know. Now, one advantage of doing my patterns this way is that I can really customize my patterns to how I want them to be. For example, my zebra here, when I did the pattern, the, the little image that I found, I didn't like how big the head of the zebra was on the image. So what I did was I actually traced out the body part of the zebra one size and then on my computer I shrunk the head down so that I could trace the head to be more the size I wanted it to be. And I think I got a pretty cute little zebra here so far. I have to finish him yet. So now I'll cut the pattern out of my lightweight paper and then once I cut it out I can pin it onto my felt and cut it out of felt. All right I have my tree pattern cut out. Now I do want to mention that I use ballpoint pen to trace so not a sharpie not anything with a lot of ink that's gonna bleed and run. I just use a ballpoint pen to make my patterns. You don't want to do anything to hurt your computer. But um, now that I have my pattern, I went ahead and cut it apart since I'm going to do these in two different colors. But I also re need to remember that when I do this part of the trunk, I need to leave myself a little extra. That's not on the pattern when you do it this way, but I need to leave myself a little extra so that when I go to sew these together, I have something to sew my leaves of my tree to the trunk. 
So that's just one thing to remember when you're making your own patterns. You might have to have mental notes in your mind to remember to when you go to cut the fabric out to cut it out with room to work with. <laughs> I have it pinned down, now I'm just gonna cut it out. I've been using these little Singer thread snips for cutting my felt and I feel like they give me a lot of control and I can go back and clean up my edges as I need to. I like to get as much detail into my pattern as possible. So here's my giraffe. And you see how I marked out his eyes and his spots. This one I was able to cut out without cutting it apart. But um, here's my elephant pattern. And as you can see, I've had to cut him the elephant pattern apart. So I start with the pattern hole and I cut out the main uh, body. And then I cut out the head so that I could cut his ears out. And then I cut the trunk out and cut that out of another piece of so, I don't know, I hope this makes somewhat sense. So as I go along, you can see how I've started my pattern and then uh, cut it apart to get the pieces that I need. And that way I'm not having to make multiple patterns for one animal, because I don't really think I'm gonna use these patterns again. Now, if you are gonna use the patterns again for something else, then you can make multiple patterns and cut out the different parts. So for my materials, I am using a fairly cheap felt. It's, I think this was from Amazon, just a 24 pack of different colors. And so um, I just like to have lots of color options because I, at this point, still don't quite have everything planned out in my mind about exactly each piece that I'm gonna have as part of the mobile. I've kind of been doing that as I go along and what I can find in my idea search so but because it's a, a cheaper quality of felt I often will use the um, iron-on interfacing so to make something that's going to be like a tail so it doesn't pull apart because this uh, felt is not as strong as maybe some felts or like with my giraffe his little horns I put interfacing between two layers of felt and I would just I just use some all-purpose tacky glue I don't know if that's the right glue but it was what I had and glued that together and then what I did was I used a black sharpie to color my white interfacing so I didn't see the white between my two layers of felt all right so I've been working on this project for a few more days and trying to get a few pieces done here and there but before I go on I want to share a few thoughts that I've been thinking about. The other day I was talking to my sister and just talking about her baby and just the excitement of a new baby coming into the world is, is always a wonderful feeling and I was thinking and a verse came to my mind Psalm 139 verse 14 it says I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well and just the fact that God has made each individual unique and fearfully and wonderfully and in his image and it just reminds me how special each little person that comes into this world is and that we should take each moment that God gives us with these little people to help them grow to be like the Lord Jesus Christ to believe in him and to trust him for their lives and to serve him with their lives and that's what my prayer is for my little daughter. I know it's a big task, but with God's grace, I know we can do what God wants us to do with the little people that he entrusts to our care. All right, so I've been working on my baby mobile for a while and making progress. Actually, I'm done now, so I'll show you the finished product in just a little bit, but let me bring you along and uh, fill you in on some of the details of how I finished up the little animals or did little aspects. So with my animals any of the stripes and spots on the animals most of those i just glued on with my all-purpose glue i wanted my animals to be three-dimensional so i made two layers of felt for each animal 
and stitched around it with a, just a basic stitch around the edge of the animal to make a pocket and then I stuffed them with polyfill. With the legs of the animals I wanted to fill a little bit of polyfill down into the legs and for that to get the polyfill down into the legs I used a little just some tweezers to pull the polyfill down into the legs. For these for any creation like this that you don't have a pattern or a instruction, you just kind of have to process it in your mind and figure out what step to take next. And so sometimes you might have to undo a little bit or recut something out. And so just take it one step at a time and figure out what you're trying to create and um, figure out what you need to do first. So like any of these, like the nose of the giraffe, I had to sew him on first before I sewed the two parts of the giraffe together and stuffed him. So now let me show you what I've made out of a pile of felt, some polyfill, some embroidery floss. I got made my patterns out of tissue paper, traced them with a ballpoint pen, some needles, pins, some little thread snips, and scissors to cut my patterns out, some yarn, all-purpose glue, tacky glue. So here's my finished product. I am so tickled actually at how this turned out. I feel like it's uniquely my creation, even though I used a lot of ideas and inspiration from Pinterest and the internet. I don't think you could go on the internet and find anything exactly like this. I didn't mention what I used for my hoop here. It's actually, I guess you would call that a, an embroidery hoop, the type that screw together. There are two, and then you just tighten it. I found that super handy because I could adjust my string lengths. So here I have an elephant, a toucan, a lion, a giraffe, a zebra. And then I have a couple leaves. I know they don't look quite safari, but I think they're close enough. And the sun, and then a safari tree. I just think that each piece turned out so cute. So thank you for joining me and following along as I created this baby mobile. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it gives you inspiration for creating unique projects and maybe even some ideas of how to branch out and take other ideas and uh, modify them to make them exactly what you want them to be. So as you live life, be sure to Keep life simple.